So another episode in the tour of Europe stock market series. Now today's country that we're going to look at is not necessarily well known for its companies and its stock market, but it is well known for its beer, its chocolate and its fries. I'm talking about Belgium. And an added bonus for this episode is that I have a guest YouTuber from Belgium who's going to be giving her perspective on the market. She is none other than Sandy from the Mavit TV YouTube channel. So let's get right into this video and have a look at the Bell 20 index. What's up guys? My name is Johnny. Welcome to Millennials with Money. I upload content to YouTube every Wednesday and Sunday, giving you tips on how to take control of your money today to create a bright financial future tomorrow. If you like what you see on the channel, then why not hit the like button, click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and become part of the ever growing Millennials with Money community. Now, Belgium is a small country, sits between France and the Netherlands, and it's one of the smaller economies in the EU. It makes up about 2.9% of the overall EU GDP, and the total GDP in Belgium for 2019 was about 470 million euros. Belgium is moving towards a service-based economy, but currently is a very manufacturing-driven economy. So the manufacturing of chemicals, of food and beverage, pharmaceutical products, plastics, metals, machineries, etc. And the main stock index in Belgium is called the Bell 20, which is made up of 20 companies, as the name would suggest. And those 20 companies are reviewed on the last Friday of every February annually. So every year on that last Friday, the companies in the Bell 20 will be reviewed and there may be changes made. It's a weighted stock index and it started in 1991 with a base of 1000. And you can see here on the screen just how that's evolved over the years. So you can see kind of how the Bell 20 has performed. The annualized returns of the index, as you'll see on the screen, are about 7 to 8%. And what you can also see in that graph is that a lot of hedge funds based in Belgium actually really struggle to beat the Bell 20 index. So interesting. And when it comes to the companies that are listed in the Bell 20 index, it's really interesting. So you have companies such as ING, which are listed in Belgium, but it's actually a Dutch company. And you have a company called Aparam, which is also listed in other countries and wouldn't necessarily be considered a Belgian company. So Sandy, what's the deal here? How come there's these companies outside of Belgium that are listed on the Belgian stock exchange? Hi Johnny, and thank you for having me on your channel. I truly appreciate the invitation. Indeed, the companies don't have to be Belgian, but they do need to have significant activity in Belgium. So they don't have to be Belgian, but the activity needs to be significant. So for a company to be listed on the Bell 20, they need to apply to four strict conditions of which we already mentioned the first one, which is that the company needs to be sufficiently active here in Belgium. Then secondly, the company needs to have a large purified market capitalization. They need to be sufficiently tradable and also have a solid liquidity. So these are the companies which are currently listed in the Bell 20 and their weight into the index. As you can see, the banking sector has the largest share of the index with a total of 21.4%. The healthcare sector is the second largest sector in this index with 21.28%. And lastly, there's the chemical sector and the chemical sector is represented at around 10%. That's interesting stuff there, Sandy. Thank you for sharing that. And as you can see, those sectors are somewhat representative of what I said before about how Belgium is a manufacturing based economy. Now, for those of you that follow my channel, you'll know that I have an ETF pie on Trading212. And in that pie, I've included various stock indices from around the world, such as the S&P 500, the Nikkei 225 from Japan, and the Eurostoxx 50 within Europe. So I was both surprised and intrigued when I learned that there was an ETF track in the Belgian index. Sandy, can you tell us a bit more about this? Yes, there is an ETF which follows this index, and it is the Lixo Bell 20 Distributing ETF. This ETF is available through the Hero, and I used to hold it in my portfolio and I just recently sold it. This distributing ETF does pay out dividends because it's distributing and it's currently trading around 55 to 56 euros and the management fee is at 0.5%. So yeah, as Sandy said, that ETF is available on the Hero. And it's actually one of the advantages I found about the Hero is that it has a wider range of ETFs and stocks than the likes of Trading212, for example. So if you're interested in that index and you'd like to sign up to the Hero, 
I have a referral link if you check the video description and that will get you up to 20 euros reimbursed in commissions on your orders placed on the Kino. So as I did in the video with Spain, Sandy and I were going to round this out by talking about the stocks that we have or we had um, in our portfolios that are from Belgium that are on the Belgian stock index. So I'm going to start this. So I used to hold Proximus, which is a telecom operator in Belgium. This was actually one of the first stocks that I held way back in 2019 when I started investing. At the time, Proximus was pretty dominant in the telecom market and it paid a nice dividend. So I thought, hey, why not put my money in this? Looks like a good opportunity. Five months later, I was at a 10% profit and I'd received a dividend and I sold the stock. Classic uh, novice investor moves right there. Obviously, I've learned a thing or two since I started investing in 2019. And I've now got a video on the channel where I analyze Proximus alongside some other telecom stocks um, and I talk you through kind of my investing process. Essentially what I found in that video is that Proximus is pretty healthy from a financial perspective. It's profitable, has a nice dividend yield, good cash flow, not too much debt. However, from a revenue perspective, their revenues are decreasing. And in the short term, that can be attributed to the health situation that's obviously going on around the world right now, as Proximus have decided to give discounts to some of their clients in order to keep them long term. And they've also shown solidarity in helping out the local community, which of course they've done uh, without charging some revenue. So that's going to cause some revenue loss in the short term. However, this is not just a short term trend. This is actually a longer term downward trend. And I put this down to increased competition in the Belgian telecommunications market from players such as Orange and Telenet. So uh, margins being squeezed, more operators in the game um, puts the pressure on revenues from Proximus. So yeah, some good, some bad in Proximus. I'm not going to tell you in this video if I invested in it. Why not click on the stock analysis video and find out what my final decision was there. And Sandy, what Belgium stocks are you holding in your portfolio? I do hold one company in my portfolio, which is listed on the Bell 20 index. I'm going to put a couple of logos here on the right. Let me know if you know which company I'm talking about. Leave it in the comments. I'll be really curious to see if this audience knows a Belgian company. This company is actually formed for mergers from three different companies, Belgium, Brazil, and the United States of America. The company I'm talking about is Abbey InBev, which is a brewing and drinks company. So that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. For now, I say bye. <laughs> guys, after my, and let's get this money, outro, Sandy's outro, best on YouTube. <laughs> A yeah, big thank you to Sandy for joining me in this video. You've given us some really great insight on the Belgian stock market there. So why not check out her channel? She regularly posts content on personal finance and investing, and she's also documenting her journey to financial independence. So her channel link is in the description. Guys, go over, show her some love, subscribe and smash the like button on her videos. And let me know what you thought of this video. Are there any stocks in Belgium that you're interested in? Are you interested in that Bell20 ETF that Sandy mentioned earlier? Leave a comment and let us know down below. That's all from today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you tell another millennial that this channel is where the good stuff goes down. Be sure to check out the Millennials with Money social media and internet pages and also the other videos on this channel. I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.